Deborah Campbell Bland lives by the motto, don't dish it out if you can't take it. All right, all right. As a certified life coach, she is driven to encourage, motivate, and empower everyone within her fear of uh, influence to realize their God-given purpose and potential. As the wife of a pastor, she supports her husband as a teacher oh, yeah. and an all-ground helper. A native of the Delta, she was born and raised in Mariana, Arkansas, yeah. and educated in the Lee County School System. Her post-secondary education was obtained at Arkansas State University and Webster University. She is married to Vanda Bland Sr. Yes. and tremendously blessed yes. with two sons, Thank you. Vanda Jr. and Jeremy, one grandchild, Jeremy II, oh, yes. and a beautiful daughter-in-law, Latisha. I introduce to you Sis Deborah Campbell Bland. Bible says, for this cause, 
I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, yes. of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, yes. that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory yes. to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Paul is praying now for inner growth. He's uh, praying for inner growth. Yes. As we go along during the day and doing whatever it is that we've been tasked to do, don't you know that we need some strength on the inside? Yes. Yes. He says, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints yes. what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge. Now this is my key scripture. That ye might be filled yeah. with all the fullness of God. Oh, now unto him that is able mm -hmm. to do exceeding abundantly mm -hmm. above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory and the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages oh, yeah. world without end. Yeah. Amen. 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 Few moments this morning, I want to use the scriptures from John the fourth chapter, the 28th through the 29th verse, in conjunction with those scriptures in Ephesians. And I want to talk to you from this subject. Why are you running on empty? Oh, and you could be running on full. Oh, Why are you running on empty? When you could be running on full. And I'm guilty of this, you know. I'm a woman, I just drive. I just drive. Sometimes I get into the car, Sister Shonda, I don't even want to look at it. Yes, I got in the car last night on my way somewhere. I looked down, the yellow light was on. And the yellow light means you don't have far to go before you run out of gas. And I'm thinking to myself, girl, you've been passing by one gas station after another. All you had to do was stop yeah. and get some gas. <laughs> Why are you running on empty? But you could be running on full. Yeah. How many of you ever felt like that? Sometimes in your life, you walking around, you walking around, things are going on all around you. People are having a good time, but you feel like ain't nothing going on. Because you running on empty. Yeah. Never felt spiritually depleted, spiritually deficient. Spiritually bankrupt. Now you might not know what it means to be spiritually bankrupt, but now just take it in the natural sense. That means if you go out to the bank account, you ain't got nothing next. Yeah. Take it out. Yeah. That means you don't have anything. And so when you're spiritually, spiritually depleted, spiritually bankrupt, that means that you have poured into everybody else's life. Yeah. You been to pouring into everybody else's life. You give it a one and you give it to that one, but when your time comes, yeah. when it comes time for you to be encouraged, and when it comes time for you to get a word from the Lord, it looks like you came here from heaven. Yeah. It's just like your prayers are going up to the ceiling and they're coming back down again. No one has anything to pour into you. You're walking around empty, but I want you to know this morning you don't have to run on empty. Because you can run on full. for Christ. Yes. But now let me tell you something. Linda, it is hard to witness for Christ if you're running on oh, empty. Yeah. Yeah. If you're running on empty, if you feel in hollow yourself, if you feel incomplete, if, if you feel like there's something lacking, or if you're walking around feeling meaningless, or if you have feelings of hopelessness, what is it that you have that you can pour into somebody else? Yeah. Oh, it, it, it says something when you're saying that you're a witness, Michelle. You're saying something because what you're saying when you say that you're a witness, what you're saying, Pastor Bland, is that you have some relevant information. Relevant information that can change the situation. Or just look at it in the natural sense. How many of you have ever been called to be a witness in court? I have, let me just tell you. For a couple of times, and it wasn't a very pleasant no, experience. No, no, no. But in a natural sense, if you're called to be a witness, you're called, you're sworn in to tell the truth. 
the whole truth. He ain't nothing but the truth. It doesn't matter if you're a witness for the prosecution or if you're a witness for the defense. The reason they're calling you as a witness is because they think that you have some relevant information in whatever case it is before the court. Now, what I have discovered in my walk with the Lord is that we all say we want to be with you. All right. Although it's easy to say. We all say we want to be witnesses because it sounds like the right thing to do. But what I have discovered, Mother Nine, is that many times we draw back when it comes to being a witness. We want a witness, but we don't want to do it too.
John the fourth chapter. Oh, yeah. We heard this this morning, but I want you to know God is somebody special. Yeah. Yeah. And the Holy Ghost is real. Yeah. Yes. When we look at the scriptures in John the fourth chapter, much attention has been given to the woman at the way. Oh, because yeah. Jesus left what he was doing in Judea on his way to Galilee. Oh, yeah. Now he had to leave Judea because there was some tension and some strife going on. Yeah. He had to leave there because uh, the Pharisees got into a discussion uh -huh. about how many people yeah. he had baptized and oh, yeah. how many disciples he had made as opposed to how many John had baptized. Yeah. And so Jesus said, you know what, it's time for me to leave here. Yeah. But the Bible says in John the fourth chapter that he must need uh -huh. go through yeah. Samaria. Yeah. Now we know about geography and all you have to do is go to an ancient book of geography and you can look at it and you can see that back then there were more than three ways to get to Samaria. He didn't have to go there, but he went there. He went there because he had a divine appointment. Because there was someone there who was running on the empty. Jesus, the Samaritans, and the Jews, because what we know is that they had a horrible relationship. Right. And when we got to when we get to the well, the woman herself was startled when Jesus began to speak to her. She said, so much he said, I, 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 I know you're not talking to me. Y'all don't fool with us. Uh, we like that sometimes that people we just don't fool. With. We don't fool with them because of the color of their skin. We don't fool with them because they don't belong to the first, second, third missionary Baptist We don't fool with them because they don't wear their hats the right kind of way. We don't fool with them because they just don't blow my bubble. We don't fool with them. We don't fool with them. But Jesus had a divine
causes her to be convicted in her spirit. Yes. Her heart is touched and her conscience is touched. Uh -huh. Jesus said this to the woman, go and get your husband. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And this was the shortest mm -hmm. part of the whole conversation. Uh -huh. She said, I have no husband. Uh -huh. I have no husband. Uh -huh. Now she had been talking not in long to me. Because you know we women and that's what we do. Uh -huh. We had to talk and I had to tell my husband sometimes he want to cut me up and I'll let me talk. <laughs>
because of who he is. Yes. So everybody can pray. But everybody can worship. Because the only way you can worship him is in spirit. So she's been talking to him all this time, but she did not know him. Because the Messiah is never recognized. He's always revealed. It's not until he told her who he was that this revelation connected to her spirit. And that was when she got everything she needed to become an effective witness. See, she couldn't, she couldn't witness when she first got there. She couldn't have gone back to Samaria because she was empty. She didn't have nothing to tell the people. And so she was living a life of emptiness because she was in a relationship that wasn't, you know, fulfilling. She had somebody that wasn't her. You can't be happy with somebody that's not Oh, you can put on for a while, but you can't be happy. Hear me now. She was living a life of emptiness because her hope in the Messiah was misdirected. Uh -huh. She came. She came with an empty water pot. Yes. But she left the water pot oh, behind because now she was satisfied. Yes. That's what being full is all about. Oh, yeah. I mean, you sat down and ate a good meal. All right. After you ate the meal, you get up and you say, I'm satisfied. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry, I couldn't eat another bite of my morning. Yes. Meal means that you're satiated. It means that you're satisfied. It means that you have everything yes. that you need. Right here, because we hungry, we ready to be fed. We're food on the natural. And so Paul's prayer for the Ephesians was a prayer that would provide them the assurance of being full. And that was by praying for their inner man to be strengthened. That Christ would dwell in their hearts, not by tradition, not by hearsay. Not by the things of this world, but by faith. Yes. And my friends, that's the only way we're going to make it. Amen. You've got to have faith. Yes. Because without it, it's impossible to please the Lord. Yes. And when you understand and realize the great love that God has for you. Yes. Now let me just talk to everybody. Let me just talk about we sitting down in the front row. When you realize the great love that God has for you, yes. not me, but for you. Yes. When you realize the great love, when you can comprehend the height, yes. the depth, yes. the width, yes. the length, when you can comprehend his great love yes. for you, yes. how can you help but not be fooled? Yes. How can you help but not be fooled? Yes. How can you help but not be fooled? Yes. Oh, you stop walking around acting like you ain't got a friend in the world. All right. You'll start walking around acting like don't nobody love me. All right. You'll start walking around having a pity party. Right. When you begin to realize the great love that he has for you, then you'll understand what the psalmist meant when he said, I prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runs over.